Tonight I'm going to preach to you about hearing the voice of God, and i got to tell you that I am so proud of your pastors. Give them a rousing round of applause. Ready to go. Mighty, mighty, mighty men and women of God, and they're raising the next generation. I haven't even got to see the little fries because they're probably like, boom, 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 boom. My kids grew up too fast, and it's horrible. In fact, you should have a bunch more. There, there, there's a word from the Lord. Just have, have a bunch more of them. Amen? God has entrusted to you powerful leadership, and God's given Pastor Josh Morocco a tremendous voice to encourage us. I was asked to come over early, and we spent the last two days having our minds sucked out and put back where they came from. And I, I think that, that God has really used your pastor to begin to exert influence. It's going to move us forward into the decades ahead. Somebody say hallelujah. The word of the Lord for you tonight is God has your number your problem is, tell the person beside you, say, I know your problem. Your problem is God's talking to you, but you know, listen. All the wives say, amen. And, huh? Maybe it's just at my house. My wife tells me, hey, hey, hey. And then I say, what? <laughs> any ladies have any idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> and uh, my wife's speak softly. She's, she's, not a, she's not a screaming crazy lady. And sometimes she speaks so sedately that I don't know if it's going to be on the test. Does anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? And so, huh, you have no idea, no? He listens all the time. Wait, wait, I don't know. Hey, so I, I don't know if, if what she said, number one, I didn't hear what she said. I, I'm turning 55 tomorrow. The AARP is on me like a chicken on a June bug. They're, they're just, they're tracking me down. So maybe I just can't hear the woman. Maybe, maybe I'm, I, I can't hear what she's saying. But then, in reality, since she's not here, I'll just tell you, I don't know if it's going to be on the test. And then later she goes, I told you that. I'm like, what? All the guys just practice it. Just give me that. Just say, what? Honey, I, I was listening. You just didn't know if it was going to be on the test. So your problem is you don't listen. Somebody say, my, my. All you husbands, listen to her. She will keep you out of trouble. All the men just nod your head like that. Don't raise your hand. We'll think you're getting born again or something. But I'm, I'm just telling you that if you just listen to her, she will, she will help you miles along the road. It says here in 1 Kings chapter 19, then the word of the Lord, the Lord spoke his word to Elijah. He asked, what are you doing here, Elijah? God said, go out and stand in front of the, the Lord on the mountain. As the Lord was passing by, the Bible says that all these different scenarios, but he didn't hear it. The, the, the fierce wind tore the mountains and shattered the rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. The, earth, the Lord was was not in this or that or the other, but it says right here, but the Lord wasn't in the fire, and after the fire there was a quiet whisper. Everybody say quiet whisper. God's plan is that he'll be able to speak to you in such a way that you would have a responsive heart that he don't have to knock you upside the head. There are people, probably none sitting here tonight in East Oahu, who are only spiritual giants come to church, but there are people who can only hear the voice of God when clubbed in the side of the head with the, with the 4 by 16 board. The other day, I was going to say 2 by 4 but sometimes that's not enough. The other day, my, my sons were putting this board up on the, the top of my roof. It's 18 feet in the air, and it's a 4 by how big, Frank? Too stinking big, Reverend Frank, minister. And it's too stinking big. It weighed about 500 pounds. And they said, Dad, we have an idea. Why don't you come help us pick up this heavy, stupid board and put it on the roof? I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I need to come. There are people that can only hear what God says to them when they get clubbed in the, in the head with a large, blunt object. Somebody say, my, my. Here it says in 1 Kings 19, it says, When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his coat 
and it went out. Everybody say, he went out. He put himself in a position to hear the voice of the Lord. Now, make no mistake. I know that you're here in, in the midweek service. You drove H1 to get here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The, the, the pastor drove me in, and uh, I haven't been on H1 in a long time. Little did I know that two cars go on one lane when you're already using it. They come on top of your car for the Lord and just see if you got faith. And so uh, we, you, you've, you've gone to a lot of love to be here tonight. First time I ever drove H1 and came to Kalani on Holy Highway where, it was, where traffic had stopped. Whammo! Somebody rammed into the back of my car. And I got out and I'm like, what exactly? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just rammed into you. I said, I noticed you rammed into me and I wasn't feeling it. You've gone above and beyond the call of duty to be here right now. You know something? I believe God is speaking to you right now. I believe that God speaks to you through your pastors as the oracle of God. And sometimes they may come with a Holy Ghost chicken skin moment that will just make you want to fall out. And they'll minister to you some profound message from God. Maybe something like, stop that. <laughs> Your answer is, yes, pastor. Yes, pastor. I was just thinking about it. I wasn't going to do it. And then, and then your pastor says, stop that. It'll help you. Somebody say amen. It says right here in 1 Samuel 3, he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. He says, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. Here's what you're going to put down. Mark this down in your notes. It's going to help you. Write this down. Text it on your, on your iPhone to somebody that loves Jesus. Just relax. Just relax. Just find yourself in a position to hear the voice of God. There's people that strive and strive and strive and run up and down and all around, back and forth, just going a little bit berserk. You know what, God, God's, the word of the Lord to you this evening is, God says, just sit down, just relax, just take a load off, just, just incline your ear. The Bible says that you should incline your ear and listen while he may be found. Back to 1 Kings, it says, And Elijah lay down and slept under the broom plant. Praise the Lord. I arrived in Hawaii, fresh off the boat, it was actually an airplane, in 1986, and Pastor Ann Fujii picked me up, me and my wife. And she said, I still had braces. Had braces on my teeth. My wife had braces. <laughs> Shortly after, we were driving the, the church van with some young people in the church van, and somebody called the church on us. Probably after they called 911, but 911 wasn't even invented. It was a long time ago. They said, they said hey, two of your kids are, are, are joyriding in the church van. I'm supposed to be joyriding in the church van. I was a youth pastor, and so I was just a kid, and, and I hadn't quite dialed in. Pastor Ann picked us up at the airport, and she says, welcome. Welcome to Hawaii. Welcome. We're glad you're here. She said, I sleep four hours. <laughs> Prayers at 5.30. And so in my little brains, I thought, well, praise the Lord. She left eight hours for me to take up this... I thought, I'll just take her extra four hours, and I'll sleep 12. Praise the Lord. I thought this will be an amazing thing. But uh, sometimes you just need to relax. Secondly, I'm, pre I'm preaching this profound message. Sit down. Point number two of this powerful oration of Scripture. Shut up. Well, praise the Lord. Glad I came to church tonight. Preacher told me sit down and shut up. Is this a trap door? Is this? Somebody have the remote for the carpet? <laughs> Ready? Bring the carpet. Ready? Pastor Josh, I love this thing. This is so amazing. Be touching the screen, man. Sometimes you just need to shut up. Your prayer list is so long, it's like a dictionary. You think God's a cosmic bellhop that's just here to flap around and do your bidding. Just shut up. Just, just take a rest. You could just sometimes come to prayer with God eternal and just say, God, what's on your mind? Ah! 
Then when he speaks to you, you think, oh, here comes the lightning, here comes the thunder, here comes the, the California mudslide or something. God's going to talk to me. And then he'll just whisper to you. And he'll say something like, I love you so much. Shut up sometimes. Now, Pastor Josh will have to tell me when my time's up, but as I'm right here, I just feel led of the Holy Ghost to throw this in. God has a system by which when he created you and your, your forefathers, Adam and Eve, he had a system. I'm going to give you the system. Write this down because it's going to change your life forevermore. You'll never be the same. Somebody say it out loud. Say, I will never be the same. God, in his infinite wisdom, gives a standard. He rebukes them. He punishes them, and he forgives them. I'm just throwing this in for parents that are raising little kids. Now, I, I have a body of material that I've written over a number of years. It's called How to Raise a Spiritual Giant. You know what God wants for every child, every preacher's kid especially? You know what he wants them to be? Spiritual giants. Can I have an amen off the front row? I'm going to tell you what. This is how the man of God turns out when his parents give him dirty lickings. Your children will be all the better. And God eternal in his infinite wisdom, the very first system that you find in Scripture is God gives a standard. And he says you can eat all the fruit in this beautiful, magically delicious garden that you want to, except what? Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Stay away from it. He gave the standard. Parents, look at me right here when I'm preaching really well. If your children don't know the drill, they're not going to measure up to do what you expect them to do because they don't know how. I told you my, th my sons are building a, a house, so one of the sons is an experienced carpenter. He's bossing the two younger sons. Well, he's bossing the one younger son because he killed the first one. It, they, they don't know. They, Andrew's like, hey, run the skill saw. I said, hey, what? Pick up that skill saw and run it. I've, I've already held the guard back so it won't injure you. There's no safety on it. And so the two younger brothers are just like, I don't, I don't want to run the table saw or the router or the, or the 16 penny nail gun. Pew, 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 pew. And it was like, watch, this will go clear across the road. Pew, pew, pew. They, they don't want to do that. You know why? Because they're nervous about it. You expect your children to know something that they clearly don't know. That's why they have you. Wouldn't it be horrible if you picked up your new little baby at Kapiolani and, and he comes out, hey, Dad, can I use the keys? Psh, thanks. All right, they just go on with the show. They need you to invest in them. Anybody got little kids you're raising? Raise your hand. Right here in the front row. I already told you, thus saith the Lord, have many more. Have dozens, have dozens of them. Wouldn't it be horrible if your kids didn't need you? God made it abundantly clear to Adam and Eve. He set a standard. So speak up to your children at a level that they can understand. If you just expect them to magically subsume your brains and know everything you know, you have robbed yourself of the tremendous joy of replicating yourself. So God set a standard. He rebuked them. This is Genesis chapter 2, 17. He, he gave a standard. Everybody say, give a standard. Give a standard. Secondly, Genesis 3, 17. He rebuked them. When they don't do it right, you tell them what they didn't do right. I'm like, oh, son, I ask you to not stand in the street. You're in the street. I'm going to do the next step, but I'm not going to tell you what that one is. One time. I took the kids' choir to the mall to sing one time, and then we had pizza after, after, the, after the, the show. They went and did a show, and I said, do not step in that street. I was a big, mean jerk. <laughs> and I, so I said, do not step in the street. It's dangerous. So one of the children, a PK, not Pastor Josh, others, it's way before. They, we had black rubber slippers for their, their uniform. And so the child went very close to the line and put her heel over the edge so that the slipper fell off into the street. Is anybody still awake in here? She, she slid the thing so her slipper would come off and go in the street, by which she would be duty-bound to step in the street to get the slipper and put it back. I was just putting my slipper on. Whoosh, lightning shot out of my eyes. And I said, you, 
Little girl, little preacher's kid girl. Go stand in the, go stand by the, but Pastor, I want, I want some pizza. Never. God eternal loves you so much that he will call you on the carpet. If God loves you that much, shouldn't you just, just have your own relationship with your children by which you would call them on the carpet? Stone silence. Deafening silence. Why would you not call your kid on the carpet when he doesn't do it right? God set a standard. He rebukes them for the standard. Genesis chapter 3, 17. He punishes them. Can't have it a P word in church. Oh, my goodness. He did what to them? He punished them. I won't get into all the punishing stuff. You know, set, you set a standard. You're going to rebuke them when they don't measure up to the standard. And you're going to make correction. If you don't love them enough, listen to me, your children will think that your word is unimportant if you don't emphasize your word to them. So whatever you say, blah, 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 and, and, and I've had my children, every, everybody in this room has had this word said to them, oh, Dad, I forgot. I invented that excuse. Hey, son, did you take out the garbage? Oh, I, what's that word again? Oh, I forgot. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You didn't forget. You just didn't, you didn't think your dad's word was worthy of it. Somebody say, me, oh, my. Oh, Jesus, help us. It says right here that God eternal set a standard. He rebuked them. He punished them, corrected them, and then he forgives them. When I first started in the ministry with Dr. Morocco, Grams was in charge of the children, and I happened to be I came by and I heard her say these words to one of the children. She said, that's it. Six weeks ago, you broke a crayon. You'll never touch another. I thought, I'm afraid to be here my own self. I don't want to stay. I just want... Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. And a guy in my church said, well, my children don't show any respect. For Christmas back in 1969, they gave him some gift that embarrassed him. I'm like, you might want to build yourself a bridge. Just get over that and forgive them. He, he's, he's puzzled why his kids won't come home for Christmas. <laughs> because respect is a two-way street. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's a sore one right there. Respect your children. You're, you're duty-bound to punish them, correct them. If you don't, you don't love them. Jesus help us. And then forgive them. Everybody say forgive them. Number one of this message. That was all just for free. That was just extra. I just threw that in for these parents. God's speaking to you right now. God wants to speak to you in a profound way before the sun comes up again. God wants to give you a message that will change your day tomorrow. It will change the following day. It will change your life. In order to hear the voice of God, number one, you're going to sit down to shut up. And thirdly, Listen to what he's saying. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him Let him hear. Let him hear. You got an ear on each side of your head. Why not just employ it to start being used? You know what your real challenge is? The reason you can't listen is because you've li been listening to media today for 18 hours. Since your clock radio went off early this morning before the sun came up, you had your own personal soundtrack that was going. And everybody from Ted Koppel to, to uh, Bill O'Reilly and everybody in between has been telling you what to think, what to do, how to buy what you're supposed to buy with money you don't have to impress people you don't like. Anybody here ever heard, heard, a, heard a commercial? If you smoke camel, no filters... You'll be as handsome as, <laughs> you'll be as handsome as, guess what? Camel no filter man, Marlboro man at the end of the line was sitting in a wheelchair on an oxygen tank, sucking oxygen just so he could tell you stop smoking. Guess what? Anybody with me? They're liar, liar, pants on fires. Anybody with me tonight? They're, they're, they're puking caca 24 hours a day. Was that out loud? <laughs> Rewinding. They're attempting to infiltrate your mind. 
Let's go back to the original. They're puking caca 24 hours a day, and you, you're just ingesting it. It's hard not to. Don't get me wrong. It's hard not to. In fact, they make apps now for your phone that will turn that blessed thing off. Jesus, help us. As I happened to be living on this island for a number of years, I was on the phone all the time. In fact, just prior to moving to Honolulu, I had a phone on my desk, a bat phone for emergency calls and a cell phone. Sometimes somebody was on all three of them at once, and I would keep them on hold going back and forth, just making them lose their salvation. Hang on, just, okay, okay, no, I'm going to, oh, all right. And now my wife is that person. And sometimes I just want to look at her and say, do you remember my name? <laughs> Honey, in fact, this lightning has just struck my brain right now. When I'm riding in the car with her, even though it's illegal, I'm going to call her on the phone <laughs> and talk to her. Ring, ring. Hello, I love you so much. Why don't you go on a date with me, probably scuba diving, because your phone won't work underwater. God, God's just, you know, I think sometimes God gets jealous of your blessed iPhone. We may have to have an altar call and just lay them before the Lord. But there is that scripture that says there's an abomination that causes desolation. Praise the Lord. I just thought I threw that in. I happened to be in one of the rooms in this building talking on the phone to top people who said something stupid probably. What? And I found my hand going away from the talking position at a very high rate of speed and psh, smashed the phone on the wall. Oh, I got the men's attention now. You know why? Because you'll go to hell for that kind of stuff. Whoa! Jesus. You know what the Bible calls it? A fit of rage. Who wants to get born again now? I'm just telling you what. I just, in this very building as the pastor, I didn't do it, mind you. It wasn't me. I just psh, smashed the phone. And then I realized, that was your daughter's phone, Einstein. <laughs> I had to buy her a new phone. Because I, I, I just lost my mind. I think there's stuff that distracts our attention so much that we lose the capacity to just realize that God's speaking to us because we're so distracted with the new app of the day. Oh, my goodness gracious. So we're going to sit down and shut up. We're going to listen. Everybody say, I can listen. Praise the name of Jesus. Number four, obey, obey, obey. It's the O word. Praise the Lord. James 1.22 says, do what God's word says. Don't merely listen to it. You can sit down, you can shut up, you can listen, and God can give you a profound word that will change everything, and you don't want to do it because it's too hard. Oh, somebody say, whoa. My goodness gracious. Do what God's word says. Don't merely listen to it, or you will fool yourselves. If someone listens to God's word but doesn't do what it says, he's like a person who sees his face in a mirror studies his feature, goes away, and immediately forgets what he looks like. However, the person who continues, everybody say continue. It says whoever continues to study God's perfect teaching that make people free and who remains committed to them will be blessed. Anybody here want to be blessed? Say aye. Whoever continues to study God's perfect teaching it says it, and remains committed to them, will be blessed. People like that don't merely listen and forget. They actually do what God's teachings say. My goodness gracious. The person who hears the Bible says, but doesn't obey it, is like someone who built a house on the ground without any foundation. My, my, my. God is speaking to you right now that he wants to give you this, the most solid foundation that you can imagine. It is the word of God. And God has provided people here for you that study the scriptures, that seek out the word of the Lord, 
Pastor Shannon was so excited about the women's conference that's coming up. I'm, I'm elated and thrilled to see what's going on in this place. Matthew 7 says, therefore, anyone who hears what I say and obeys it, be like a wise person who built his house on a rock. 